Hello, hey everybody. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, I got a light out. I just realized that. That's weird. Oh well, looks like we got enough light. So let me just pull up my um, page. How is everybody doing tonight? We are going to be making just a quick little fall. Well, I don't know how quick it'll be. Um, we're going to do a fall decoration. It's what I do with it. It's right here. We are going to make this tonight. I might make a few alterations to it because it's the first one that I made. So I might do a couple of different things to it. Um, and I might do it in different order. First one I made. So, you know, we're going to wing it a little bit. When you come on, say hello. Oh, good. Thank you, Jason. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Good evening. How is everybody doing? Okay. All right. So the first thing that I did was I cut me some blocks. These are, this was a one by four piece of wood, just a long piece of lumber. And of course, we all, this is actually three and a half. Nothing in the lumber community is actually what it says it is, but this is about a half inch, about three quarters of an inch by three and a half by four. Okay, so it's four, it's not quite four inches, it's about three and seven, 15 sixteenths this way. Hi, Betsy, welcome. Um, so anyway, that's not really, I cut them in, let's see. This is, I'm not a lumber person. Okay, so the board was three and a half inches and I cut them in four inch lengths. And I did it on my chop saw so that they would all be exactly the same size. Hi, Cindy. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I did it a little bit backwards with these. Um, I put the holes in them and put the whole thing together before I put my stencil on here. And the words, I wanted the words, the word to be a little bit more centered. So the, I'm gonna do it all everything all the lettering and everything first and then we'll drill the holes and put the thing and i also use wire and i might try and use um the wrap the jupe but i'm not sure i'll be able to we're going to try it though because i think i'll like it better but we're just going to wing it a little bit hi sherry hey guys thank you cindy so much hey Aunt kate everybody's here okay so the first thing that i did was i used the dixie bell voodoo gel stain in Tobacco Road. This is what we're going to use to stain these. And then we're also going to be using Evergreen, Terracotta, Coffee Bean, and Fluff. Okay, those are all the colors that we'll be using tonight from Dixie Bell Paint. And so let's just go ahead and get started. If y'all have questions as we go along, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, guys. Um, ask away. Um, we're just going to sit here and stain these first. I love using the, the Tobacco Road gel stain for this because it dries quick. It gives a really nice stain look, but a trick, if you don't want to use this, I'll do it just really quick on the back side of this. You can use coffee bean and dilute it a little bit. Actually, let me bring y'all in just a little bit. I think I can do that with this camera. Hang on, let me see. How is that? That better so y'all can see it or you don't need to see my face okay so i'm going to take this coffee bean i've got a little bit of water in here and i'm just going to rub it on here to show y'all okay do you see how that's staining that so if you don't have the gel stain don't freak out you can definitely use any kind of brown paint i just really like the color of this um I like the way it goes into the wood. It's easy to use. It's easy to clean up. And so, and I'm making this whole thing. Um, usually, you know, I'll do a little bit first and then we'll move on and uh, do something else or I'll just show part of it. But I'm going to just go right ahead and I'm going to do this start to finish. So y'all can stick with me the whole time if you want. Um, my daughter really likes that one. I'm thinking she's probably going to have keep that one for herself. But if this one, I've got sawdust on here from drilling. Okay, there's one. 
This is how easy it is. Quick, quick, quick. I'm going to get this one. And you can use any color. You know, we're not, y'all don't have to do the same colors I do. I mean, I think that goes without saying. And these have already been sanded, so I cut them and sanded them. They have real, already, it was already um, sanded mostly, but once you, when you cut them, you get all the little edges that are bad. And so I cut these out in the garage and sanded them down. So. And get this like this. There's another one, number two. And I'm doing the backs of them just because if I do sell these, I want it to look finished. Um, for myself, I probably wouldn't care. Not only that, but you actually could, if you were making this for yourself or if you were making them to sell, you, you could do both sides and do something different on both sides, each side. Um, that way you'll get two, two for your money. Maybe even more economical. I can't remember how much I paid for this board. It wasn't very much. I think they were $8 and I got an eight foot board. So I got quite a few out of each board. I think I got two boards. And um, I made my son a sign. Now for his sign, I just did the coffee bean and then I did black lettering. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different to give that more rustic look. And we're gonna be using fluff for that. So I'm just quickly, by the time I'm done, actually let me lay these out like this so it'll dry a little better. By the time I'm done with the last one, the first one will be dry enough for me to go ahead and start the next step, which is kind of cool. And then I'll be, I'll have to use a blow dryer a little bit on that next step because we want to make sure it's good and dry before we put a stain on or put the uh, stencil on. And I have these little, I'll show you the stencils in just a minute, the little Scrabble stencils that I got from Essential Stencil. I've ordered tw twice for them, once. I really like their stencils. Um, they're very nice. They're thick. I'm not like Jason knows, I'm not a big stenciler, but Jason, I did this. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can, hang on. Oops, whoa, I can really go in. Okay, do y'all see this back here? I stenciled that the other day. Came out pretty good. It's kind of proud of myself. I did that trick where you put the um, you put the um, clear coat on it while the sun stencils down. It kind of seals it a little bit so that you get more crisp line. Um, it worked pretty good. Worked pretty good. I was kind of digging it. I'm gonna be making another one of those. Oh, Cindy, you do. Yeah, I ordered that one behind me, the um, Let Freedom Ring. I got that from them. I got these Scrabble tiles from them. And um, I also got a Welcome to Our Porch stencil. But unfortunately, the board that I got was a little bit too narrow because I, I just, I didn't take the time to go look at the stencil. I thought both of the stencils I had purchased were the same size. Now I have a knot in this one, you see this knot here, so I'm definitely going to be using this side. Oh, there's another knot. I did seal these knots with a spray shellac, just in case I was going to do a light color. Um, so this one, this one over here, I'm not sure what the deal, why that's not taking the stain, because this one's taking the stain. So I'll use this side over here to do my thing. But um, I just want, I had the boards laying against the cabinet outside and I just took the spray shellac and just gave them all a quick spray just in case I decided to do a light color over them. Uh, this one, let's see, oh, pumpkin. This is the board that I'm going to use to put underneath while I sand, while I drill those, so we don't need to do that one. Okay, so all of them have stain. You see how fast that was? And it's just as fast when you use the Paint. The paint actually dries even faster, so sometimes too fast isn't good either because you're trying to move it around. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is fluff. Whoop. Fluff, okay. 
I am going to put a little bit more in here. I started this not really much. And let me grab a paper towel. To dry off my I don't want this to be really wet. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to very haphazardly, I'm not real concerned about this being complete coverage because I'm just going to be sanding it back. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, it turned out really nice. I'm thinking about maybe doing something on the other side of it. I just, I don't really have a lot of the larger stencil. I mean, I don't have any. I have two. So I do have letters and stuff. I mean, I could do something on the back. But I was thinking, you know, that's very patriotic. But what if I put something completely different? It would, you know, um, be, I could use it more than one season out of the year or maybe do a fall stencil or Christmas or and I'm not going to worry about these inside parts because they're, they're going to be sitting next to each other like this. I did paint them a little bit. I mean I could do a dry brush on here. I'm not concerned about coverage on there at all. And we're just going to do this one. Yeah I when I did this one a few, I did it a lot, the first one just a little bit ago, and um, I went ahead and did the holes. I was a little bit concerned about whether the, hey Debbie, whether the holes were going to work or not, and so I went, did that first, and then I, when I went to go put the stencil on, it was not quite where I wanted it to be. <laughs> All the bleed through. I, if you get a can of the spray shellac just um jason it's really quick you can just go and spray all the knots and it's clear so you don't have to worry about you know what worrying about later what colors you're going to use you know because it's clear so you can just kind of do it wing it um and it lasts a long time it's kind of pricey my, actually my son bought it he was doing a project so i had it i didn't actually go out and buy it i probably would you know Probably would have used boss but um, it's quicker just to because I did I knew I didn't need to worry about the this part of the board just the knots and so I just quickly hit all the knots with a quick squirt and it worked really well okay so that's all we're going to need to do for this and now I'm just going to hit these with the blow dryer so that I can dry them you could do a wet um, sanding on these but I want it to be more of a rough sand. Oh my blow dryer is stuck. Hang on. Let's hope everything doesn't fall. Okay, I got the wire back there. Okay, here we go. Hitting it with the blow dryer just for a second. Um <laughs> I hear ya. I hear you, Jason. Yeah. This this brush, Mary, this is just a um artist brush. I got this from Michaels, I think. It's the fine touch brand. I, I have a gazillion of them. Let me show you my bucket. This is my bucket of brushes, and I just ordered a bunch of more um, from Darice because they were having a 65% on sale because they're going out of business. So I wish that I had known about it earlier. I would have gotten even more. Okay, so this is 80 grit. The size of this one, I don't even know. I can measure it for you. I have my thing right here. Hang on. This brush, it's a synthetic brush. And it's a one inch, it's a one inch brush. And I use, I use them all the time. 
So this is an 80 grit, so it's a pretty, um, pretty strong grit. I didn't have anything in between. You don't have to do this as distressed as I am if you don't want to. Oh man, that's nice, Debbie. Nice not to have to buy it. You could do this with pallet wood too. And when he said, uh, Jason, when you mentioned the um, hey y'all or it's fall y'all, I was thinking maybe fall, it's a, a hey y'all or something. You could maybe glue these together like this and then do your fall down or glue them. I've seen them glue them like this, kind of like that and then have the letters here. There's a lot of different things you can do with this size of a piece of board. And you don't have to distress them. That's, that's what I like about these kind of crafts is there are so many different things you can do for whatever, your, whatever you like to do. I've got so much dust on here. I can see some nuts in your prints. <laughs> Sand those off. And I do the stain first because it's a little darker than the wood. I did go through here a little bit. Um, but I just like to stain them so there's a little bit of depth to the color underneath it. And it's not the it's the, just the pine. And you could even go back over these with more stain and grunge them up a little bit more if you wanted to. It's all personal preference. Because I couldn't decide if I wanted to do a white board or a brown board. But I thought for fall, like a fall, this color is a good one. Okay, so that's all the prep for the boards. That's it. We're done with that. So what we're going to do is I have these, I got these stencils from Darice uh, also, and they're paper, but I'm going to reuse it because I'm just using the one. So I'm going to line my boards up like so. Like I said, I'm doing this a little bit different than I did earlier. So let's just see how it goes. Okay. We're going to line them up like this. Oops, pumpkin's going to go on top. Who is D-S? Doris. Doris. D-A-R-I-C-E. They probably don't have anything left. They're going out of business. Um, they might have some stuff left. But I, I got stencils from there, brushes. Um, I got some wooden trays, but they don't have any more of that stuff left. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up. This is supposed to be adhesive, but like I said, I've already used it once, so it's kind of, and nothing really sticks well to paint that's still a little damp. This paint is a little bit damp, even though I blew it dry, but we're going to wing it. And I get these little brushes from the dollar store. I think Harbor Freight has them too. They have a natural bristle on them, and so they're nice and stiff, and I love these for doing stencils. I'm going to use my terracotta, okay, and actually I probably don't even need to squirt anything out. I'm just going to kick it out of the lid. Okay. If I can get it open, there we go, because you barely need any and we don't want to waste any paint. Okay, so I'm going to dab it in, into the paint, okay, and dab it off onto my paper. The less paint, better. <laughs> the less bleed through you're going to get. And then we're just going to dab it up and down. So maybe, Jason, you can try that top coat trick where you take your top coat and you put it on your stencil first. And it kind of seals it a little bit. Um, and then go back over it with your stencil color. It seemed to work pretty good. I think I had a little bit too, I think my... I did it pretty quickly and the brush that I was using was a little bit too damp, I believe. I think that if my brush had been drying when I put the top coat on, it would have actually done even better. But I did have to go back and touch up around the letters just a little bit. 
So again, this is terracotta. This color is one of our limited colors. We only carry this in a 16 ounce, but I love it. Um, I use it quite often. I don't, I'm, the reason they put it in a limited amount is because it was not a very popular color. But I mean, I use this color even when it's not fall. So I, I like this color. I like it better than the Florida orange because this one is not so bright. I like the dark, the deeper color. Okay, so that's that color. Now I'm going to take the, the evergreen and I'm going to do the stem. Where's my other brush? Actually, I think I used, I just used a little brush like this. So I'm just going to, instead of a stencil brush, I'm just going to use a little artist brush because this is so tiny. And I'm just going to dab it on here like so. And I think one of the things that I'm not a real, I've never been a huge fan of stencils, but what I do like to do when I use a stencil, and this is because I, I like to have a little bit more depth to it, and I'll show you where to put it. So if you can tell this pumpkin here, you see how there's some shading? That's how I like to do my stencils, like that. Okay, and that's what I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to leave the stencil on. I'm going to go in with the same brush. I'm just going to put a little bit of my coffee bean on here. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the terracotta over here on the napkin. So it's not as dark as coffee bean. But it ha it's, it's, it's kind of an orangey brown. And I'm just going to go around the top of my little stump there, stem, root, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to go over the top of just the top here, just to give it a little bit more character. I, I think the thing I don't like about some stencils is how they're just so sharp edged and I don't know. It's just personal preference. That's just me. So this is how I do mine. I always, even when I do lettering, I like to add a little tiny bit of shading just so it's got a little bit more depth to it. So it's not so 2D, I guess is the word I'm trying to think of. Okay. So do you see how that looks when you do it that way? It just gives it a little bit more oomph. And you can even take, you know, yellow or something and brighten up the bottom if you wanted to, but I was happy with the way this looked, so I left it like this. Okay, now I have, I'm going to put this in my water so it doesn't get hard. And where's my other one? I put it in there already. I'm going to rinse it off. Okay, we don't want my stencil. I don't want my, oh, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a roller. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Put that over there. I've already got some coffee bean laid out. Okay, and that's the color I'm going to do my letters. So we're going to do one at a time. Put this to the side. These are the letters I got from Essential Stencils. Essential Stencils. Um, they're nice and thick. I like them. Let me put the lids back on these. A lot of times I will use an adhesive spray for my stencils, but for this project I don't need to because they're such they're so small. Um, hang on, let me try something up here. Just go ahead and move this over. Okay. All right, so I'm just, the what on these, I had to keep them to the edge a little bit because of the wire. And so they're not, they're all even, but they're not centered. And my OCD is, hey, Amy, it's kind of driving me nuts. So I'm doing this before I put, so if I put the, so what I did before was I had to go to the right this way, but if I put it to this side, it centers it. So that's what I should have done first time. You, you, you live and you learn. Learn from your mistakes, guys. All right, so this is my roller. It's just a, um, 
I forget. Let me show you one without pins on it so you can kind of see. I think it's a microfiber. It's not foam, but these work really good for stenciling. And let me just feel how wet this is. I'm going to try this and see if it's wet enough. Because like I said, the least amount of paint you can get away with is the better. Get me a fresh, clean side of that. All right. So I'm just going to hold it down and roll it. Yeah, there's plenty on there. See how I didn't even have to get in my paint, so I'm probably wasted with some coffee bean. But that's okay. And I moved it. That's okay. It, it turned out. There's our F. Put the hem over there. And then our board. Do our A. And this bent a little bit when I was washing it. I'm going to put a little bit more paint in the center of this because it's not getting that center part. Again, if you use a, um, good gracious, obviously this board is not completely flat. If you use adhesive stencil um, spray, you don't really have to hold it down, but A, quick, quick, quick. This is so easy. Anybody, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Okay, L. And another L. And then we get to use the drill. Yay. I love my tools. I, w I saw a, a tool today online. It was called the Craig. It's a, I have a Craig um, pocket hole driver. I love it. My son and I built a, a bed with it. It was awesome. That's why I bought it originally. Oh, that turned out good. The numbers, they're just um, to mimic the Scrabble letters. So the letters on these are the same as the letters that are on the Scrabble game. And I'm just going to put these to the side. These will clean off really well even after this paint is dry. So I'm just going to put those to the side. It'll, it'll rub right off. So those will go over there. And then I, these clean up pretty good too. So I try and keep them and clean them. If it doesn't clean up, I'll throw it out. But I'm going to put it in here to keep it wet. And then I'll try and clean this also, and hopefully it'll um, stay nice. I've, I've got one that I've used several times. How big do you say the boards are? These are, here, I'll tell you exactly. So the board was eight foot long, and it is three and a half inches wide by three quarters of an inch deep, uh, thick. And then I cut them for three and, okay, this is where my math, that's an A16. So there, I cut them three and 14 sixteenths. <laughs> or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. Seven eighths. So three and seven eighths. No, six eighths. I don't know. This is how much <laughs> my husband would die if it almost four inches. And I use this chop saw and I put a clamp. So I cut my first one the way at the size that I wanted it to be, cut it, and then I put a clamp on my on my chop saw. So then every time I slid my board in, I knew every board was going to be exactly the same. If y'all want me to do a quick demo on how I did that, I can. If that's not self, if that doesn't explain it good enough, I'm happy to do that. Um, my chop saw is a very old chop saw I got from a neighbor at a garage sale a long time ago, but it has served me well. But anyway, what I was saying is I saw this new, so I don't have a table, I have a table saw, but it's old and it doesn't really, it doesn't have any of the lasers, it doesn't have a guide on it and stuff, so it doesn't really do me much good. And so I really need something, I have a circular saw, and I saw this really cool Craig, it's called a Craig, 
um, oh, I don't know, it's like this big long metal thing that makes your cuts straight. Don't I sound, I sound like such a girl. It keeps your cuts straight. I want one. I want one of those. I want one of those. Okay. That's what I'm going to get. So I can cut, that way I can cut my own boards and it's cheaper. I can get a big board and cut my own boards for signs and stuff instead of buying a pre-cut board. It's cheaper to buy a board and cut it yourself. So I'm putting this underneath as I drill so that when I drill, I don't drill into my table, which probably wouldn't matter because my table has been cut with the saw many times. I'm going to go ahead and measure. It's quicker when you're doing a project like this to do every step for each board all at the same time. And it's like an assembly line. So if you do one step one and then do another step to the same board, it takes longer. So if you do the same step, so right now I'm going to measure where all of my holes are going to go first for each board. So what I did was I just took my little ruler here and um, I used the depth. Okay, let me show you. I don't really do a lot of lives with this kind of project, so bear with me, guys. So I'm using the depth of the ruler just to keep it equal throughout the whole thing. And I'm going in three quarters of an inch. That one I do know. So right here is your three quarters of an inch. And so I'm just taking my pencil and marking it. And then same thing over here. So this is a half inch, and then I'm going in a quarter. Okay, so then my dots are equal. You see that? And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And that's going to hit me right in my number right there. AccuCut, that's what it is. It, thank you, Jason. See, the, the boy that's watching is the one that told us what it is. Yes, it's AccuCut. I am getting one of those. I am getting an AccuCut. I saw it today. My husband doesn't know yet. So this dot is going to be on my one, but that's okay. That's okay. Thank you. This is, I, Amy, if you, I don't know if you saw what we're making because you were, I don't think you were on here, but this is what we're making. Thank goodness. Okay. I'm not, I don't do a lot of craft. I love doing crafts, but I don't do a lot of them. And um, I didn't have any furniture to paint. I'm waiting on a custom to start. I cut, I've, got, I've got two customs I'm going to start, but they're not ready yet. And um, so I had some time on my hands and I did pick up some furniture today. I didn't have any of my own furniture to paint, but today I scored a, um, I'm trying to count, I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. Today I scored um, two dressers and two little end tables they're not really end tables, they're just like little, it's gonna, I think it's going to hit every number. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Don't let that bother me. Um, but I'm trying to decide if I should paint them like a set. They all match. Amy, maybe you can give me your input. Should I try and paint the whole set? It's a, it's a tall boy. It's like a five drawer tall boy, a six drawer dresser, a little, a small three drawer side table, and then a little one, little, um, like an accent table, but they all match from the same set. Hi, Sandy. Welcome. Jason, you had to Google it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. That makes me feel better. That makes me feel better. Yeah, you, I'm going to get one too. We're going to, we can learn how to use it together. It's only 80 bucks. I figure the money I'll save, um, the money I save buying larger pieces of wood and cutting them down myself will pay for the, it will pay for that, that jig um, probably within four projects, I would think, depending on what projects I'm doing. So every hole is going to hit a number. Um, I didn't want to think about that one, did it, but that's okay. I've already told myself not to worry about it, and I'm still sitting here thinking about it. But these are small holes. Okay. One more. So the bottom of this, so I am going to do small holes here on this one first, and those will be like my pilot holes for my larger bit. 
which because if you try and drill into these small pieces of wood with a large bit, this is the bit that I'm going to use for the um, the hanger, you'll split the wood. And I can't promise you that it won't split it even still. If it hits just right, it could still split it. But we're gonna we're gonna hope it doesn't. But using the width of the ruler help or the this the width of it helps to keep everything pretty even. I did somehow screwed up on um I'll show you. I'll show you all my mistakes. So on my L can you see these are crooked? You see that? So these these here, these here, and these here all are nice and straight. But the A and and the L line don't line up. But it's a rustic piece, so we don't care. Right? We're not going to sweat it. Okay. So the bottom of this one is going to get, we're going to put small holes in both of these. I have my drill. Hopefully my battery will last. Make sure that your bit is tight. If, does everybody know how to use a drill? Because if you don't know how to use a drill, this is your um, chuck. I do know that word. And this is where you're going to make your hole bigger or smaller. And you just put your bit in there and make sure it's nice and tight. If it's not, you'll know because it'll start spinning in your wood. Trust me, that's from experience. Okay, so we're just going to go in and just like an assembly line, I'm going to go ahead and put the holes in all of them at the same time. Again, I have a board underneath it to keep from going through the table, which if y'all saw my table, you'd be like, why is she so worried about that? And I'm just going to go in here and quickly put holes in here. You want to make sure your drill is as straight up and down as you can manage it. Mine doesn't have a level on it. Some drills do come with a level that helps you to keep it straight. This one doesn't have one. But this drill has served me well. I have several drills. <laughs> I love tools. So I have drills. I have a Dremel tool, which if y'all don't have a Dremel tool, you really need one. You'll always find a reason to need it. If you got dolls, you can do their toenails. Oops, that's gonna be a little bit off. Darn it. But um, I use my Dremel all the time. You can grind stuff with it, cut stuff with it. You can cut PVC, cut metal, wood. You can grind with it. I have a Sawzall, which is amazing because I love cutting stuff up. I'm kind of crazy when I get power tools. I have a chainsaw that I cut like nearly every, I cut tons of trees. I cut them down and I cut them up. <laughs> There's nothing more exciting than to fell a tree right where you expect it to go. <laughs> now the trees that were really, really big, like we're talking, you know, more than a foot in width. I have those cut down but we have like a half acre three quarter we have about three quarters of an acre and so we cleared some trees off so that the grass could get more sun I wish I had a lot more acres but now I'm just kind of cleaning up the back of them some of these make sure that the holes are open It sounds like my battery might be going, but we'll hope, hope we'll... I'm just getting it so that now I can tell when I do this that some of these aren't some of these aren't perfectly straight. But that's okay. They're, it's still gonna work. Now my friends cringe when I get my power tools out because I'm also not very really careful. Like I probably am supposed to drill a hole in my hand. 
but that's okay. So this one we're going, now we have our pilot holes here and a pilot hole just means your first hole and it's a smaller hole than the hole you're actually going to put in and that prevents your wood from splitting and that's what I'm hoping will happen is it won't split and we're going to put this big hole in here because the, the jute that I have going in here is a lot bigger and so we're going to hopefully this won't split but smaller you put a smaller hole in first that <laughs> went all the way down <laughs> turn this around. I forgot I had a hole on the other side. And then I'm just going to use my sandpaper and then I'm going to take it from the back side so that I can push that <laughs> to, be, to go through my hand. <laughs> I know if my friends were watching they, they totally would be like she's totally going to put that through her hand. And you can you can work your way up to a larger hole if you want to. But, you know, this is a rustic piece. I'm not worried about this being clean and beautiful. I just want it to, you know, like these holes, you can see they're rough. I am not worried about that for this project. You can work up to this size if you're doing something that you want it to look good. Let me see if this will cut up. So you can work up to this size, and then you won't get this bad look on it. But again, I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, so that's that. This is going pretty quick. We're doing good. Okay, so now we're going to put them all together. I'm going to put pumpkin on the top. F, that's the other thing. Make sure you spell it right. I'm not going to tell you how I, I know that. Make sure your letters go in the word that you actually want it to say. <laughs> okay, so my question to you guys is this. So for this one, I used this metal this little, these are, it's like a picture hanger, hang, hanger wire, if you see it? And it actually has several wires together, if you see how it's frayed on the end. Now, that is easier to get in these holes. I could try, I don't think this would work. This is not going to work. I'm going to have to use the metal. These are not, so I would have liked to have had the, the, the jute in between each one, just because it would look really cool. But my holes would have to be bigger. And I'd have to stuff it through there with a wire anyway. So we're going to use this. So the way I did this is I went through here. Rope. Is it rope? <laughs> okay, so I'm going from, from the back. And I'm going to take this because this is, um, I do have other wire, but I didn't like it because it was really shiny. And I don't, I don't want this to be shiny. So I'm going to take the end of this and just bend it over so that I can get this through without it splitting, without it fraying. So you see how I have like a little loop there? So I'm just gonna poke it through, just like so. And then go through the top of this one, or the front, I should say, not the top. Use my crepe words, Michaela. Uh-oh, don't do this now. A darning needle. <laughs> I don't. I don't have one of those. I have. A, I do so, but I don't have a darning needle. Okay. So I'm going to pull these together. So what I did with that one is I pulled these together um, so that they're tight, and then afterwards I kind of, after I got it tight, then afterwards I just kind of bent them a little bit just to pull it just a little bit so it wasn't quite so stiff, um, and it made it a lot easier to make sure they're all the same with the part. If I tried to if I tried to do it like this, it makes it hard to make sure that both sides are even. So I'm just starting out with them close together. And this is just my own experience. Y'all probably are like, yeah, she did it this way, it'd be easier. But this is me doing this for the second time in my life. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. I had these I got these cheap little I have nice ones out in the garage, but I just use my cheap, cheapy ones from the dollar store, and it cuts this wire fine. And then I just bend it over flat, just like that. You see it? And then we'll do the next one. Go in from the back. We're going to bend it over. Go in from the back. 
just kind of use what I had. You crochet. I my aunt taught me how to crochet years ago when I was a wee thing, but um, I prefer the sewing machine. <laughs> so I can sew. I sewed a lot of my kids' clothes growing up. And now it's just um, cheaper to buy clothes. They, of course, I guess if you want nice clothes for a better price, you can make them. But hi, Wendy. Okay. See how quickly this is moving along, guys. And I, I'm gonna, I have a, I'm gonna put a little ribbon on there, but it's not really. I didn't. I should have gone to the store and gotten better ribbon, but I'm just gonna use what I have. Get this is wanting to double back on itself. This is. This wire is not the strongest wire in the world, but for this purpose, it's perfect because it's not real, real, real shiny. It's got a little dullness to it, so it's a little bit more rustic. And it's, you know, malleable enough that I can do all this without, um, hey, Wendy, without special tools or anything. I don't need, um, special tools to bend it or anything. I wanted to keep this as simple as I could. I mean, who doesn't have a one by four out in the garage, right? I mean, it hardly took any wood, hardly took any paint. If I get this done in the next 10, 15 minutes, it's under an hour. And it would be even quicker if I was just doing it on my own without yammering. Okay, and it was hot as heck today. So for those of you that don't live in 90 degree heat, I'm jealous. I'm so ready for fall. We had a very hot winter last year. I did not wear a long sleeve shirt at all. I don't think I wore a long sleeve shirt even once last year. I want to wear a long sleeve shirt <laughs> at least once. So these, this is actually neat, neat enough on the back. I mean, it's, a, it's not as neat, of course, as on the front, but you can make this pretty neat where you could actually, like I was saying early, double up your, your thing. So if you come up with a saying or a word um, for the back, you do faith, house, <laughs> you cut one off and do home. You could put, a, put something up at the top into a four-letter word like we did here. Look at me counting on my fingers. Yeah, I have school, so I count on my fingers. I'm just kidding. My kids are, my kids are smart. <laughs> not, because, not because of me, though. I'm just kidding. Okay, so we're going to go back through here. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. I haven't even paid attention to the camera to see if y'all can see what I'm doing. I apologize. Does everybody get what I'm doing? We're going back through. I don't have any questions. I'm assuming that y'all are getting it. Otherwise, this would be a waste of time. Nobody would know what I was doing. Okay. So I'm pulling it. I hear a cat trying to get in somewhere. I duct tape the cat door so they haven't been able to get in here. Thank you, Cindy. They haven't been able to get in here in a while. <laughs> I'm glad, Wendy. <laughs> I cracked myself up. And thank you for sharing, guys. All you guys that shared, that's awesome. Thank you. It really helps. So I'm getting, I have a website, but I'm getting a new one. I just got it built and I'm almost done adding the rest of the products because that's something that, unless you're really rich, <laughs> you do yourself. They added a few, few for me. 
I'm thinking so, Debbie. What do you think? Should I? Should I? And if I do, what do y'all think I should charge for them? I have no idea. That's the I have the worst time with pricing. Sometimes I price something I think is too high and it sells really, really quick. I know. Okay, let's check it again. Fall. There we go. <laughs> See, Wendy Hughes that's watching. She is a friend of mine. We used to be in business together. And so she knows me. Wendy, I think you missed me drilling, and I was telling everybody that if my anybody, any of my friends were watching me drill, they would be waiting for me to put it right through my hand, and they would not be surprised if I did. Tell the people that I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I have scars all over me. And it's not like I'm trying to be, I'm just taking this, and this is a little bit sticking up, I'm just going to press down. So that that's sitting a little bit flatter. We don't want we don't want this to poke anybody. Okay, last one. Okay. Again, I'm just bending these over the end so that it doesn't fray. You wouldn't have to do this if this was a stiff wire and it was a solid piece of wire, but there are several pieces of wire on this to, to make it stronger. This is just the, the wire that you, you know, you see it in the backs of the pictures, the Hanks pictures, that's all this is. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. One day I, I'll have to tell you all, all the stories about me, fearless. Fearless or careless, I'm not sure which. <laughs> so Wendy and I, our first project together was a nightmare. We did a china cabinet that was in horrible condition. We had, to, <laughs> it was a nightmare, but it turned out really pretty when we were done. But we had, we used pin snippers. We used, it was just, <laughs> <Cindy>. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. <laughs> so for the, those of y'all that are coming on the replay, y'all need to go back and watch me um, drill the holes in here because it, it occurred to me when I was doing it that I was holding my hand behind it. And what's funny is no one said anything. They're, they were all like cringing probably like, oh my gosh, she's getting ready to go to the ER. But if you guys knew me, you would know I probably wouldn't go to the ER. I would probably grab my super glue and glue it because that's what we do here. We take care of business at home. I actually removed a very large, it wasn't even, I wouldn't even call it a splinter. It was a stick that went into my daughter's foot. She was probably about eight years old. It was in her toe. For those of you that are grossed out by stuff, you probably should hold your ears. Anyway, I ended up sterilizing a box cutter and we cut down into her toe to pull it out because we had my husband works at the hospital so we had some um what do you call those things the uh like a clamp type of thing where you can clamp down on it yeah and so we pulled we cut down into her toe because i told her i said you know do you trust mommy and daddy or do you trust the doctor which one do you want to go to. She's like, I want you to do it. So we just sterilized everything and cut down into there and pulled that sucker out and super glued it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's all put together. And yes, it's spelled correctly. And I like the placement of the letters better on here, even though some of the holes go through the letter, you can, the numbers, you can't even see it because it's so tiny, but you see the difference because I did this one after I put the holes. Um, this one, the letters aren't centered. The letters are centered to each other, but they're not centered to the board. I like I like this one better. The first one's gonna go to my daughter. Hemostats, Michelle. See, I didn't even know you were watching and you just couldn't help yourself. You're like, I gotta tell her what that is. Hemostats. I worked in the hospital before my kids were all the web seals that like stitches is great. Do you mean like a real spider web, Cindy? 
like a real spider web, like, like a real spider web. Oh my gosh. Okay, so for this one that I did first, I used this rope here. But I, I'm, I'm thinking it's a little thick, so I'm going to try this rope. I had, I forgot that I had this. So I am going to use this. And I, and one thing, I won't have to burn it. I had to burn that one to put it in there. So I'm going from behind, okay? I'm just going to go from behind because I tried it both ways and it lays a lot nicer if I put this from behind and put the knot in the front. That is so cool. You know I'm going to try that. Um, I, I will be trying that. So I'm just going to put this in, put a knot in here. I know. So Wendy, she makes me look like I'm not so tough anymore, huh? Let's see. I'm going to have to double this knot. See, I could have gone with a smaller bit on my drill. Since I went to a smaller, I should have thought about that when I went to the smaller rope. That's okay because I can just double knot it. And then I'm going to cut this off. I've got my, for those of you that sew, you know that you have scissors that only are allowed to be used for cloth or fabric. If anyone touches them and puts any paper or any other material in here, they get a spanking. Okay. So I like this better. So this is the one I did first. So this is how you learn and you get, so you see the difference in the knots. Let me see if y'all can, let me hold this up. So do y'all see the difference in the knots? This is the one I just did, and this is the one I did earlier. So this is going to actually hang nicer from the wall also. So that means my daughter will definitely be getting that one because I'm thinking it was just... <clears throat> so I know I want it to be, you know, like that, and I know I'm going to do two knots, so I'm going to give myself a lot of excess here just to be on the safe side. <laughs> Wendy, she's... She's got a lot of spider webs. That's hilarious. And when I'm putting those through the holes, I'm spinning it with the with the with the um, rope so that the rope doesn't unravel. And I want it to go about there. So I'm going to put my knot here. And I'm sure there's an easier way to do all this, but this is my way. There's a lot of things that I do that could be done easier if I just knew, but I'm just doing it my, doing it my way. All right. And I'm just making sure that the rope is really tight. So, okay, so then that's that. Like that. I'm digging it. And I'm going to put a quick bow on here. I don't have very nice stuff for a bow, but I'm going to do it just really quick to show y'all what I did earlier today. So I have this really wide jute, but I'm going to cut it in half width-wise so that it's not as wide for the third little piece. And I'm going to just bend it over. I'm just going to fold it in half. And do this. Well, when I cut myself with these scissors, Cindy, then I'll go grab me some spider web <laughs> and see if it works. That is cracking me up. Okay. And that gives you your little bow like that. And then I have this right here. This is just some some stuff that I had um, in the back closet. This has got wire in it, but I don't need I don't need it to have wire. Cut that like that. And then I'm gonna take another piece of this on the front, I think. Let me cut this a little bit. I know these are very sharp. If I cut myself with this, I may have to. Um, I don't think I don't think a spider web would cut it. I, I probably would have to go to the 
super boring. I'm just cutting these little arrows in here just because I think it gives them a little bit more character. Again, I'm not the most crafty gal. And then I just pulled this out of the closet. This has got a, this is a little bit, I don't have this on the other bow, but it's just a little bit. And I thought that would be kind of, well, I don't know. It's kind of bright. I don't know. I'm going to use it. A stapler. I could do that. I could use a stapler. I'm just going to use this anyway. It's pretty. Okay. And so what I did earlier is I just put these together like this. I don't know. We're going to do it. And then I just use this smaller piece of jute. I'm going to have to go get me some different um, ribbon though. This is not exactly like what I want it to look like, but this can be easily, I can change this out very easily, so I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So I'm just giving this little tight little middle part, I'll play it out a little bit like that, and then cut this right here. We are almost done, and I'm going to take it and just tie it onto the rope. So I didn't even have to use any super glue. I had my super, my glue gun all heated up earlier, but I never needed to use it, which is nice. Tie a knot here. And bring it down. Just bring it down here a little bit. Let's see. What do y'all think? Not too bad, huh? Let's see, it's 8.03, so it took me just a little under an hour if I wasn't yakking. And if I did it just by myself and did an assembly line on everything, I could probably make two of these easily if I just really quick. But I'm, I kind of like it. I might have to make one for myself. And then the other thing that I was thinking that I could do with these little blocks, what do y'all think? Isn't that cute, Michelle? So that's two of those. I was, see, I had a little box of them that I cut up. But I have, I've seen where people will take them like this, and we'll just do this really quick so y'all can kind of see what other stuff. But I have seen people take them. You could actually, so one, tr one trick that I know is I'll use wood glue and super glue or not super glue, wood glue and hot glue at the same time so I don't have to use a clamp. I have some clamps, but I'm really frugal. So I only buy clamps, like when I go to Harbor Freight, I'll get a couple. I'm really trying to build up my, my stock on, on those. So I really don't have enough clamps to do like a real wood project. So for this purpose, I would use hot glue with the wood glue, but you could stagger these like this and make a word and then hang it. I've seen people do that. I'm just trying to think of ways to use them that's not the same as everybody else where they put them on the wall in a scrabble thing. I mean, I love that look. That's what I did for my son's thing. But um, I'm just trying to think of different ways. I even saw where somebody had done them like this. Where they, can you see that? See how they're kind of stacked on each other? $22, that sounds about right. I think $22. Y'all would y'all pay $22 for this? Now I can't I can't make that determination because I said I'm very frugal. Like I might pay 10. <laughs> but, but what do you think of a customer? Maybe 22? I mean it's pretty cute. And if I and if I did something on the back to make it even double, like put something for a different holiday on the back. Because this doesn't, they're actually, I saw one similar to this, and they actually had the knots on the front. So with this small of a wire, um, you really can't see them too bad. You see, how they're not, they're not very messy at all. So you could do a whole other look on the back of it. But, um, but 
But anyway, I was just showing you this. There's just different ways. So I might make some other projects with this so y'all can kind of just keep an eye on the page and see what I'll take pictures and post them. Topheader.com starts at a dollar bids and free shipping. Really? I never heard of that. Top Hatter. I score my clamps there and there are a few. Are you kidding? I'm going to have to look that up. I've never heard of that website. Thanks for that tip. Okay, guys. So that's the end of this project. Appreciate y'all so much for joining me tonight. And um, we will definitely be back next Wednesday for sure. If I can start a project before then, like I said, I've got several pieces of furniture that I purchased today. Um, I might take some pictures and see if anyone wants some custom done. But do y'all, I'm thinking of doing um, the whole set the same and maybe trying to sell it. Now, I, I think Jason might be gone, but Jason, if you're still here, I've seen that you put yours, I thought you did a whole set the same, like it made it like a set. Did that, did, was that a custom or did you sell that? Um, I can't decide if I want to do all of them different and sell them individually or if I want to do them as a set. Anyway, if you're watching on the replay, let me know what you think. And Cindy and Debbie and Kent, Wendy and Jason and Michelle and all of you guys that joined me today. And for those of you that didn't say hello, that you're still a little bit too nervous about, um, saying hello in the comments, which you should be doing so that we can get to know you. Um, I appreciate you very much. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Y'all have a good weekend. It's already Thursday. God bless. Bye.